Well, first of all, I said this before and I'm saying it again. I have no business with any Aburi led Labour Party. So that is settled. At any point in time, it is decided that Aburi is the chairman of Labour Party. That ends it for me, for that Labour Party. Because we set out saying we would destroy the structure of criminality. And that agenda has not been removed. But that's, by the way, it's important to note that before Abure went to court, INEC has rejected him. The elected members rejected him. Members of Labour Party did not vote for him. By his own admission, recall that Abure said he came out unopposed. Abure said everybody in that NWC came out unopposed. So that's an admission that no single member of Labour Party voted for them. So you cannot sit down in your house or the backyard of any place and call yourself any name and you expect people to agree. Because elections are the hallmark of democracy. And elections confer legitimacy to any government. So without election, the test for popular participation and legitimacy is gone. So they do not have legitimacy. The court can rule anything the court wants to rule. The constitution will not change. Section 223 say that periodic election must be guaranteed. Section 82, subsection 3 said the executives of parties must emerge from the members of the party or their elected delegates. And then, let me say it again. Abude went to court before they instituted the Kiateka chairman and the committee. And that again tells you that we are all culpable for what is going on in Labour Party. Recall the last time I was here in this interview. I was saying we must deal with this issue decisively. You don't leave a party for three months without leadership and expect to come down to meet it the same. Immediately, Abure's tenure was over. We were meant to choose that caretaker committee. On the 9th of June, 24 hours is the only time you have as a person to allow any institution to go without leadership. Right. 24 hours. And now you have three months. And with the three months, you can see that these people with the structure of criminality, they're using every means right. to consolidate their power. Okay, and it so will not stand. What we've seen is that Mr. Pito be the presidential candidate of your party last year. The only state governor you have, Abia said, Mr. Alex Oti, and a couple of other people have stepped up. In your view, they are stepping in to, may I use the word, save the party. Is it late? You know, I've always said that prevention is better than cure. And a stitch in time saves nine. When I was talking about decisiveness, some people were saying, Kenneth Okongwa is pushing people too fast. The truth is this. When you do something at the right time, you foreclose the tendency of anarchy. The issue here is this. In a nation like Nigeria, where the ruling party is looking for any way to make sure they compromise the opposition, you do not have the leisure of time. Uh, I can tell you that Labour Party has presently constituted is now a housemaid to APC. And being a housemaid to APC, the 2023 presidential candidate of Labour Party will be decided on the table of APC. Because we know their moves. They are, they are meeting the people now who help people to win cases in court. Because if nobody from your party is supporting you, then who are you now trying to become a chairman to? Okay, so are you implying yes. that this other faction, what they are doing, they don't have what it takes to save the party, that it's, <laughs> it's all going down the drain? Since 2023, we've not won any election. Look at the caricature in a do state where Abure comes from. If Abure cannot deliver his state, both from the primary election and the secondary election, then you must be a fool to go and say you want to pick 
a ticket under Abure to run. Let me tell you what's happening in Edo State, in Ondo State. In Ondo State, Abure told Oti when he intervened, he told Oti, you that are elected people should remain in your election and administer. Leave the party for us. You know what is happening in Ondo State? They used the national deputy chairman to Abure to secure the ticket. Oh, so they can veer into the elected people's position to take their ticket. Why did they take the ticket? To use it to trade with it. Right. And do you know, even after writing that he has withdrawn officially from INEC and somebody else going to, you know, contest, they still said no, that they did not withdraw, even with the letter. And now they are trying to scatter the ticket. They are trying to make Labour Party unviable. Because they are working now for some surrogates that want to destroy the Labour Party. So you are essentially accusing Mr. Abure of working for the APC. Now, those are your words, right. not mine. Okay, Good. so what, what are you implying? What I'm implying is that when the leadership of a party has no relevance, has no legitimacy from the members of the party, it is reasonable to infer that they are working for other surrogates. Remember, when Abure went to the Newe to do the illegal election, in my own view, the Supreme Court has not ruled. He said the ticket is reserved for Peter Obi. And I said in this program, that that's bribery, that he wants to use it to make Peter Obi to close his eyes on the illegality that done. When their tenure ended, it was not even Peter Obi that said their tenure has ended. It was INEC. And they were disgraced out. And that comes to the culpability of INEC. If INEC said their tenure has ended, why did they not accept the caretaker committee? You see, all these things are all just. But the issue here is this. Now, when Abu Re, now, when Peter Obina went to uh, to do the right thing, what did Abu Re say? No, the ticket is no longer reserved. What does that tell you? These are transactional politicians who have no policy, who have no principle, but what they are doing there is to trade. And he said, oh, T, we don't have ticket for you. Who do you think they are reserving the ticket for? Let me give you a poser. The deputy speaker of the National Assembly told O.T., look, I would not sit down as a man of the ruling party and allow opposition to govern Abia State. And then there is an Abure that is saying, that ticket is no longer reserved for you. And they are winning cases in court. The witch cried in the night, and the baby died in the day. So again, what do you think is happening? So again, you're trying to also indict the deputy speaker of the house. No, Being it's not an indictment. He said right. it openly. Okay. So it's not an indictment. Right. But I can see the nexus. Right. Every ticket in Labour Party is reserved for APC people. And I have told you the nexus. It's not by accident. Let's go back to INEC since you just mentioned it. It's interesting that INEC itself had said that Abure is not national chairman because mm -hmm. the election that was held, or the convention rather, held in Newi was invalid, that it did not meet the legal requirements and the electoral requirements of that body. So there's a conflict here, and then the court goes ahead <laughs> to recognize him. As a lawyer, yes. what do you say today? I say it's ridiculous. You know what it is? The courts, knowingly or unknowingly, are destroying and desecrating democracy. And I'll just give you examples. It was still our court that said a man that did not even participate in an election is the candidate for the election. And I'm talking about the case of Bashir Machina. We are Lawan. He's sitting in the Senate now. And he never attended a primary election of the Senate. So the court effectively has taken away from the members of political party the right to choose who their candidates are. A referee, a regulator, an INEC, told you the court that... This man is unknown to us, and his leadership is unknown to us. And you, the court, you're telling the regulator. And the law says INEC should be independent in whatever they're doing. 
And then you, the court, you're telling the eye neck, you don't know what you're saying. A man that did not invite any member of the Labour Party to vote. And you, the court, you're saying you don't know what you're saying. But let me tell you the judicial trick here. Because the sections that the court considered, I've not read in details the court, you know, but the sections the court considered, section 251 1R, section 285 14C, and section 43. What they are simply saying in those sections is that a party should be allowed to choose their pooling unit agents. So this bunch of strategic, you know, transactional politicians, they went to court when there was no alternative leadership. To tell the court, on those state election is coming up. We don't have agents. If you don't allow us, if INEC does not allow us to come in, that will frustrate the party. So the party should be allowed under the leadership of Aburi, since there was no leadership. You see why we would have moved ahead in time so that there will be alternative. And that was why I was talking about being decisive and doing the right thing at the right hour. Then you see the trickishness. So they did not go into the depth of whether it is legal or illegal. Then they are now talking about allow them to present agents under the leadership of Julius Habure. It's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a mess. Another interesting thing is that this same Abure was your mm. chairman yes. when Mr. Pito B ran for presidency. It seemed like everything went fairly well. Yes. Labour Party did very well. There was so much promise. What happened with Abure? Or Good. was it that he was always this person? <laughs> you know what? First of all, before the 2023, you know, I wasn't a member of the Labour Party. Yes. I joined in for the presidential campaign. And I am a man of due process and rule of law and can go to any extent. I was briefed by the people who didn't want Abure to be chairman. But I told them no. That in as much as there are points in what you're saying, if you want to punish Abure, you go through the criminal proceeding. That when you go through the civil proceeding, what you want to do is to use Abure's problems to hijack the Labour Party. That you must wait until after the tenure of Abure. Or if you want to remove him, go through the process of law. And I was here to defend the Labour Party. And I want that time that I'm not defending Abure as a person or whatever he's doing. Now, his regime is over. A man with such bagar. You should be privileged that you have been given such opportunity to even be national chairman. Because he's not qualified to even be the national chairman from all the things that I have known now. That when we entered for example, into... For example. For example, the national treasurer said, you forged my signature and took money from the banks, from the party's account. The former acting national chairman, the lady... Lebeke said the same thing, you forged. The NLC said, you forged. These people, the Arab and B people said, you forged. All these people cannot be wrong. In politics, perception matters. It is not proof beyond reasonable doubt. It is perception. Now, your tenure is over. Organize all-inclusive convention, which you, Abu signed with all the stakeholders. Then you went to Ne, we and started you know, raising your hand. You have won. Raising your hand, what? This is today is World Mental Health Day. A lot of politicians need to check their mental health. And, and, and honestly, it is, it is ridiculous. So they could, even if they were smart, they would have gotten some villagers to even be printing so that it will even look, you know, it looked like the work of a smart person. Do you know that not even all the posts were filled up? And then your saying is a convention. No, it's a caricature. Right. You have said that Labour Party came yes. on board because you wanted, or your team, or you know, the whole whether it's obedient movement, Mr. Pitobi, wanted to dismantle the criminal structure Absolutely. of Nigeria. Yes. How do a mass of people that wanted to do that allow such a person with questionable character? 
to carry on. So that means from the beginning, it yes. was faulty. Now, we joined them. Okay, yeah, right. We were not there when such a when, person when, yeah. ascended office. Okay, so... Yes, if I were there yeah. and somebody like that ascended office, I would tell you, blame me. Because you and I know I will shout, right. if for nothing else. So we met them, and, we saw, and moreover, you know, I'm sorry to say it, but who were they before then? I have never heard about Aburi as a name. I'm sorry to say it. I have never heard about Aburi as a name. So I met them there. So what I'm trying to say is that now we met them. My dear, people become born again. If that wave had come in, and an Aburi, for instance, is like, now I'm in the public sport. Now let me behave in the right way. Why not? I am judging him, not for what he did before I entered. But from what he did, as I am in now, as a spokesperson of a party that you sent to represent you, I was not aware national convention was going on. And you say it's not criminality? How do I speak? What do I tell people? I heard it on the social media. So the party is falling now, to... Now, oh, okay. said he wants to bring an auditor to audit the account. Why? Has Abure not agreed to that? And he's calling Pitobi, come and make peace, come and make, make peace on what? All the things he said you should do. Which one have you done to show transparency, to show accountability, to conform to Article 8C of the Labour Party Constitution, which said we are going to build a new Nigerian personality that will be altruistic, that will be very selfless, that will be transparent, and will conform to due process and rule of law. So how have you, as an Aburi, what have you done to conform to it? Peter B said, do this, do this, do this. How many have you done? And that is why I'm saying, Peter B should have, I told Peter B, this will sell you out. And I mean it. The only thing I'm begging them is that, because he's still my brother, anywhere they sell him to, let them let me know. Let me go and start, look, look, let me go and look for him. So you're, you're, you're blaming Peter B, partly. For this. All of us. Right. I told you, you do not leave a party for three months without leadership and expect to find the party the same. Okay. And you you, you were here when I was screaming right. Right. and shouting. That was on the about 27th of July that I wrote that letter. Right. And then on the 25th of July, I wrote to His Excellency Oti, please, this is urgent. And I remember I said, because of Undo election, because of a Do election, we don't have even a day to waste. We have to do something and do it immediately. And people said, Kenneth Dogongwa is preaching violence. He's preaching rascality. Okay, we are in it now. Okay, you are here now. You are in it, as you said. What do you believe sincerely yes. is the way out of this quagmire? If Abure is sincere that he wants peace, let him carry all his newi convention executive and go back to Newi and repent and ask God for forgiveness there. You should do a crusade there and ask God for forgiveness. And then tell the Labour Party members, I have heard. Please, let us come together. I will not partake in anything that has to do with bringing new executives. Our tenure is over. Then there will be an all-inclusive convention organized by Senator Nenad Usman and Darlington Wokocha. And what Alex, His Excellency Alex Soti did is purely constitutional by the Labour Party Constitution. Article 13.2 AIII. The governor and the deputy are members of NEC. So in the absence of NWC, which INEC said so, then it's only the NEC that has the right to appoint the NWC in between conventions. And that is in Article 13 to B. And they did it. And INEC was the one who said that Labour Party should do it. Because that was why they disqualified Abure. You know what? Immediately INEC did not recognize Nenad Yusman immediately. I started suspecting something is wrong somewhere. Maybe a telephone call has gone to INEC. And they started doing his internal affairs. Internal. Wasn't it internal affairs? When you told Abure, don't come. Your regime is over. So is it now that it has become internal affairs? You see double standards everywhere. So and you know why? 
Because double party under Abure has become a housemaid to APC. That's the reason. Right. So now you have a caretaker committee headed by Senator uh, Nanadi Usman. Yes. How do you advise that, that committee to, to proceed? I mean, they've already well, said they're going to court. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah but, like I said. Yes. They have been legitimately instituted and they have the right of appeal because they have interest in the matter. Of course, I will support the appeal and I will tell every Labour Party member to be preparing for alternative because our courts is a place you cannot vouch for even if the law is as simple as ABC. I've told you, you can imagine the courts telling down police, dragging police into politics. Right. Telling police not to provide security for an election. And you know, they say they should not participate. Let me ask, was the police meant to participate in the election in any manner whatsoever? No. So what's the business of the court? Dragging police into politics. That is really, I don't understand what is going on. Now, that's the second thing. Now, the third thing now. So the court is now trying to decide for any general election who the winners are. Look at what's going on in Edo State. Aswe Godalo is now being, you know, refused to have access to the documents. Remember, I told you people here that our electoral jurisprudence has been overthrown. And by saying that after 21 days, you cannot bring in any evidence or any statement of oath, I say you have destroyed any petitioner's right to petition. Because what the INEC will simply do is to ensure they frustrate the petitioner and not give them the documents until after 21 days. So that's a serious case. You've said you want Labour Party members, obedient members, yes. to start looking for alternative. What would be the alternative in this circumstance? Is it APC? Is it P what is it? What was the capacity of Labour Party before OB, before we went in? Zero. <laughs> that I'm aware of. I, I, I was not aware of any one person from my whole local government that was a member of Labour Party. So they have to be preparing for alternative. Because anything can happen. If I tell you that I know what will happen in the Supreme Court, then I will tell you that I am not being honest because law is no longer certain in Nigeria. If anybody says he wants to be a candidate and he wants to go under a bure led to pick ticket, I am saying it. Kenneth Okonkwo is not part of it. So that when you receive the disgrace that you receive, you don't call my name. So going forward, um, Labour Party has one state. It's interesting. A lot of people are expecting that it will grow beyond that state. Absolutely. From what you're seeing, you, you think that there's no way forward in terms of expanding beyond what it, what it has right now? Under a led government, none. As a matter of fact, I said... The people that will be our candidate in 2023 must have been known because they will be decided on the table of APC. And I mean it. So what growth are you? Which growth? If you see any growth on the head of Labour Party under Abure, that's a boil. It's not a growth. It's not a growth. It's just a boil. It will soon, you know, pause will soon come out of it. There's so much concern about your party, Labour, because of the hope that a lot of people had last year. Um, in the party, in the person of Mr. Pito B, and all of that. So, moving to the future, going forward, what are you going to tell the majority of Nigerians who are looking and seeing what is going on? Well, <laughs> first of all, when I cascaded the three political parties, I remember I told Nigerians, your loyalty should not be to any political party or to any politician. You may say anything about Kenneth Okonkwo, but by the time you watch my interviews, you will see how consistent that I have been. Because you learn from experience. When we went into Labour Party, the wave was created. It can still be recreated. 
when I told people that Labour Party is not viable under the present arrangement, the only reason people support opposition is integrity. If they can't see that integrity, then why are they following you? You don't have the resources. You don't have the position like the ruling party to give to them. And that's why I keep shouting. Nigerians must see us as opposing every tyrannical rule. Nigeria must see us as exhibiting strength, exhibiting integrity, exhibiting knowledge, and questioning everything that the ruling party is doing. That's the only way they can trust us. And if they give us their mandate and their vote, they must see us that we fought at least to the last of our ability. Protest is allowed in democracy.